folks and welcome to Monday's edition of Magoo Sports News. Sorry I couldn't do a show on Friday but I just moved house and none of my stuff was unpacked. As you can see folks, I'm in a new sort of area. Um, trouble is I don't have a desk to report from so in this new place I'm going to do it a little bit talk show like, as you can tell from the style. The great thing about having a talk show style is that you can have guests on your show like this. No thanks Cookie Monster, I'm okay. You can also have guests like this. Hey Arnold, how are you doing? Hey Arnold, I heard you have a bastard son. Good on you. Anyway, moving on. As there was no show on Friday, there is lots to catch up on. I've still got my white bit of wall there that I can put pictures up like that. Boom. And uh, let's get on with it and see what sport in action has been happening. So folks, just because I'm in a new talk show style area, doesn't mean to say I'm going to be any less thorough with my sporting action and analysis. So let's have a look at what the headlines are. In the football, lots of activity going on. Managers I'll start with. Now Nottingham Forest have just announced that Steve McLaren is their new manager. I'm not too sure about Steve McLaren as a manager. He did well at 20 but all the other jobs he's done not really turned out that well. Um, Obviously, Billy Davies was sacked as the Nottingham Forest manager. Mm, Alex McLeish has resigned as Birmingham manager. No great shock there, I suppose he had to go. He got relegated even though he had a fair amount of money. Martin Joll was appointed as Fulham manager. Now, this is a great appointment. I think Martin Joll is actually a very good manager. He'll come in, he'll do a very good job. He still has a house in London, so he's very settled there. So watch out for Fulham next year, they could finish in top six I think. Uh, Aston Villa, what is going on there? Nobody wants to be the manager, Steve McLaren turned it down. Uh, Mark Roberto Martinez turned it down, he said he'd rather stay at Wigan than go to Aston Villa. That's saying a lot for the club, tough times coming up for Aston Villa. Uh, Gus Hiddink seems to be expected to be the Chelsea manager. He is basically Turkish coach at the moment, but I think he's going to leave it. I think he likes the lure of going to Chelsea, lots of money to spend. All Abramovich wants is the Champions League. Now the Euro Under-21 Championships have started. Not too big a tournament, but if you're watching England, a lot of the players obviously playing in the Premiership. Now they had a game against Spain yesterday and they drew one all, which was actually quite a good result because Spain are the overwhelming favourites for this tournament. A lot of their players basically can't get into the senior team because the senior team's too damn good. So a lot of them do play in La Liga, same as England, so I would actually think that England and Spain would be the two favourites for this one. And finally, just one more bit of news about the football. Usain Bolt, he's come out and said that he wants to play for Manchester United. Bit of a strange one, this one. Just because the guy can run fast, I mean, doesn't make him a good footballer. Oh, hang on a minute. Michael Owen, he could run fast, and he was okay. I don't know. Give him a chance, see what happens. So, folks, the Formula One. Wow, what a race we had in Canada. Absolutely everything happened in this race that could happen. First and foremost, uh, just like to mention, Lewis Hamilton came out before this race and said that he could catch Sebastian Vettel in the World Championship. I don't think so now, Hamilton. Now, basically, the, the race itself started off with rain, rain, rain. It was a bit like Scotland, to be honest. It started under the safety car, first five laps were under the safety car, so people are kind of sitting there going, well, you know, if we wanted to watch a whole bunch of guys follow a Mercedes at 100 miles an hour, we could go to the M25. But anyway, safety car comes in, everyone goes off. In the rain, it was all over the place. Uh, people, this race was dominated by people changing tires, and it was tires that actually decided the winner of this race. So anyway, after a few laps, lap 25, it stopped for two and a half hours because of the heavy rain. Come back out, more safety car action. The safety car was in and out like I don't know what. So, toward the end of the race, this is where it got really exciting. Last sort of 10 laps, Vettel is miles ahead. 
Then you've got Button and Schumacher second and third, with Button a little bit behind. Now Button, I don't know, I think he was on slicks and uh, started basically catching these guys up. Weber and Schumacher were having this almighty battle for second. They kind of screw it up and Button passes the two of them to get into second. So into the last lap of the race and Button is flying. Bettle is trying everything to hold him off but Button passes him. Takes the chequered flag, wins the race. What an absolutely fantastic race. Still think Vettel's too far ahead for anyone to catch him, but still, good exciting race. So folks, I'll quickly mention the cricket and the golf. In the golf, Robert Rock took his first title ever. This guy is like 30 something. He's been playing for so long and he deserves a title. He's been close before, but he won the Italian Open. And in the US PGA, Harrison Fraser, another maiden victory for someone. This was a great story because he's 40 odd years old, never won anything, he's looking like he's gonna lose his tour card, which means he can't play in the professional circuit. But then he wins this, now gets exempt for two years on the US PGA, gets to play in the US Open, which is next weekend, so fair play to him. Two maiden victories for those guys. In the cricket last week, England had to settle for a draw. It was obvious they could have maybe done something but for the rain. Now into the tennis, and Andy Murray shook off his semi-final defeat in the French Open to come out and play some scintillating tennis on the grass. Now he was beating everybody, such good players, and then he beat Andy Roddick, who's a bit of a grass court specialist. Hammered Andy Roddick, 6-3, 6-1. Now this is a great victory. Now the final was supposed to be yesterday, but again, some more rain destroyed that. Uh, it's gonna be this afternoon, so watch out for that, folks. It's probably playing as you're watching it, and uh, it should be a good final. He's playing Joe Wilford's song. Now, folks, the Rugby League, and there's been a lot happening in the Rugby League. First and foremost, two shock results. Salford, who were in the bottom half of the table, way down the bottom half of the table, beat Warrington, who were the high flyers, 18 to 6. Now that was a huge result. The second shot was Huddersfield got beaten by Wakefield, another team that are languishing in the bottom half of the table. They lost 13 to 10. That's the top two teams who were just looking so good losing. Now, the other results basically were Castleford drew with Wigan. Not a bad result for Castleford, considering they were 22 to 4 down at half time. Keeps them in the hunt for the top four place. Hull beat Harlequins 38 to 6. Hull maybe an outside chance of getting in that top four. And Leeds come, came back after losing last week, winning 44 to 14 against Hull Kingston Rovers. Uh, another result was St Helens drew with Bradford. So what does this mean? Basically it means that the top four places are so not undecided. I think about eight teams can still make the playoffs. I know there's still a long way to go, but the top two losing was great for the league. Now in the other match that one of my viewers mentioned to watch was England versus the Exiles. A couple of things I want to mention about this. Um, the Exiles actually won it. The Exiles basically is a team of Australians and New Zealanders that play up here in the English uh, National Rugby League uh, Tournament Super League uh, and it's against the best English players that are playing in the Super League. Now there was lots of effort in this game, lots of uh, uh, good passes into the final third but nothing happened, no scoring and what I want to question is why did they play this game a couple of days before a full Super League fixture? I don't think these players can play two good games in a row, so it kind of begs the question, was this sort of a friendly game? Didn't seem to be too much of a friendly game, but I don't know, timing wise, not a very good thing to do. Now, wanted to mention the State of Origin match. This basically is New South Wales in Australia versus Queensland. This is basically a three game series where they have the best players from New South Wales, you have to be born there to play, and the best players from Queensland. Now these two states are where the best rugby league teams come from. Uh, this game is on Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock. It is a great game, watch it, it gets bloody violent. I mean, you're having fights in this game because they hate each other, it's a cracker. Watch out for that one. 
So folks, what have we got coming up this week? Well, there's not a great deal. In the football, the Under-21 Championship continues. England play the Ukraine, that's on tomorrow, keep an eye out for it. The cricket, third test of England versus Sri Lanka, this is the last test. That starts on Thursday, another one maybe you want to keep an eye out for it. It's five days long, so not too sure about that one. Big tournament starts though on Thursday in the golf. It's the second major of the year, the US Open. Now this is always renowned for being a huge long course. The big hitters are always in for a shout on this one. They make it as difficult as possible so that a probable winning score of plus one or plus two. These guys will be under pressure for this one. Watch out for it. So on to my transfer news and gossip section. A lot of bit, a little bit of things been happening here and there, not too much. Three big signings though. First and foremost, Man United are putting out a statement of intent that they want to win the league again. I think also they were so embarrassed by getting beaten by Barcelona in the Champions League that they want to really buy in a few good players. Now they bought Ashley Young. Probably, they haven't actually bought him yet, but the deal is pretty much done and dusted. They're talking about figures of 80 million. I agree, that is a decent price for this guy. He's a proven England international. He will do good for them. Uh, the second signing for them is Phil Jones. Now, they're talking about a similar sort of price for this guy. Not too sure. I think he, because he's a young, sort of up-and-coming talent, that's why they had to pay so much for him. We'll see what happens. Might work out, might not. Depends on the young guy's mentality. Can he play for a big club? Now, the other big signing was Liverpool have signed Jordan Henderson. Similar situation, I think, to Phil Jones. Hasn't proved himself at international level as yet, so talking about £20 million for a guy. Mm, bit of a risk. He will be a good uh, addition to the squad. They need to buy players, these top clubs, because it's like a breathe, living, breathing entity. They need players coming at them out all the time. Newcastle have made the signing of Johan Caballé. Not many people know who this guy is, but he was part of Lille's double winning squad from last season. Everyone seems to be snapping up their players. Can anyone else buy players from that squad? Uh, and lastly, Johan Elmander. He has left Bolton on a free transfer. Don't, uh, this guy basically just drained out his contract so that he could get a money move to Galatasaray, which is where he's gone. He's on big wages there, so uh, no great loss for Bolton there, I don't think. So folks, that's what, all we've got time for today. I hope the new layout doesn't freak you out too much. Gonna get a couple of guests on my show for Friday. Well, I'll just put a picture up and have an imaginary conversation. Bit crazy, but never mind. Don't forget, folks, if you've got any viewer comments, anything you'd like me to mention, then enter it in the section below. I'm gonna go off and watch the Wimbledon qualifying event. You guys should do the same. Enjoy your week.